TII Item 430, June 5th, 2017. WWDC 2017, iOS 11 Beta 1, and HomePod. Welcome to Today in iPhone. Yeah, I like it a lot. Today in iPhone. Hey, Gola! Oh, yeah. My beautiful iPhone, which I never have out of my hand and that I do everything with and has become an extension of who I am. Today's episode is sponsored by Texture. Go right now to texture.com slash TII to get your free trial. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Rob, and you are listening to the Today in iOS podcast. First up, I want to thank Kevin for sending in the artwork for today's show. Kevin wrote the following. Hi, Rob. This is a photo of me in front of the Apple Valley Fair store in Santa Clara, California. I used the Skitch app to put the text on the photo. Regards, Kevin Crossman. Well, thanks, Kevin, for sending in this artwork. And folks, you can see Kevin's artwork in the free TI app via the bonus button for episode 430 or at Instagram.com slash Today in iOS and also at Facebook.com slash Today in iOS. Kevin's picture continues to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of TI on the iPhone. Please, when taking a photo of yourself in front of your local Apple store, if at all possible, make it a square picture, as I need to make them square for iTunes. And put the Apple Store location on the photo along with the TII or Today in iOS branding. And thanks to the many of you that have already sent in your photos. As always, send those pics to todayinios at gmail.com. And speaking of that email address, if you have some music that you have created on your iOS device that you would like to share with the audience, please email to me at that address and make sure to include which app or apps you use to create said music. Normally, Apple keynotes start exactly at the top of the hour. I mean, almost to the second. This time, not so much. They did not start until 10.08 a.m. Pacific time. That is by far the latest they have been in the last 10 years for any Apple keynote that I've covered. Maybe it was an issue getting all the people in the seats. Whereas the video showed them that it was still flowing in right up until the start. But, again, the video that they played started at 12. 08 p.m. Central Time, 10.08 a.m. Pacific Time. And when it finally did start, it was video uh, that, well, it's kind of become a tradition now, the past few keynotes. Maybe it's a Tim Cook thing. It was a funny video about the apocalypse, and that's A-P-P-ocalypse, uh, where they start by showing a new first-day Apple employee being seated in the server room while they're getting ready for the big move. And he unplugs the servers and brings the world to an ap- apocalypse, however you want to pronounce that, apocalypse. And, well, if you get a chance to watch a video, it is funny and it's cute and it's all over YouTube and everywhere else. And if you're an app developer or an Uber geek like, you know, anyone listening, you'll find it very funny. And if you're just a significant other of someone that's kind of uses iOS devices, you'll find it mildly amusing. Tim Cook finally, I should say, came on stage uh, after the video. Uh, His shirt was tucked in, and it just goes to show you how fashion has changed. A couple of years ago, it was almost 100% untucked for the Apple employees. This year, for those that got on stage uh, and even some of the invitees, the first four were tucked in, and then the last seven were untucked. Hey, these guys, okay, the gentlemen and women define geek culture and geek style. So it just seems to be a little trend where we're going back to the tucked mode. Anyway, Tim in his sweater and tuck shirt came out on stage and gave a few brief data points. There are now over 16 million registered developers, of which 5,300 of those devs were in attendance this year at WWDC, the most at any WWDC, and they came from 75 countries, A 10-year-old from Australia was the youngest this time. Tim then said no real updates, way too much to go over, and that they would get right into it, and that there was going to be six key announcements to cover in the keynote, which was actually not true. There were seven things. Uh, The intro, including the video, clocked in at seven minutes. Item one was tvOS. And you can kind of see Apple's level of importance based on how much time is given to each announcement. TVOS received one minute of time, as in less than two minutes. Yikes. Item two was watchOS. That received 12 minutes of time. Item three, or really 3A, 
was Mac OS that had 14 minutes of time. Item 3B was Mac updates as far as Mac hardware, and that was 16 minutes of time. Item 4 was iOS 11 with 43 minutes of stage time, by far the most. Item 5 was the new iPad Pros with 28 minutes of time. And finally, item 6 was the new HomePod with 14 minutes of stage time. Then there was the outro slash wrap-up that was three more minutes of stage time. In all, the presentation lasted 138 minutes, which is long, very long for a keynote from Apple. iOS and iPads had 51.5% of the stage time. Macs and Mac OS had 21.7% of the time. 10% went to HomePod. 8.7% went to Watch OS. 7.2% went to the intro and the outro. And less than 1%, 0.7%, for TV OS and the Apple TV. So kind of see how Apple weighed the importance of things. So what did Apple say in that one minute per TV OS and Apple TV? Just that Amazon Prime Video is coming later this year. Finally. Which, you know, is what I have wanted for quite some time. Hopefully it will be here in time for the tick, which is going to be released in August. Tim did say that we'd be talking about this more later in the year. So that leads me to think there will be a new version of Apple TV this year, and it will be announced sometime, probably in September. Next up was watchOS, and on stage was Kevin Lynch. And he came out to talk about watchOS 4. Watch faces, that is where we started. And there are three key new ones to talk about. First, there is the new Siri watch face, which automatically displays the info you need when and where you need it. Rotating the crown shows more info. And it keeps updating throughout the day. Think of it as an AI-enhanced watch face. The second new one is Kaleidoscope watch face because they could not find anything else to match up with a new name for our Mac OS any better. Let's just say it received very muted applause. It was uh, that slow, awkward audience clap. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, that kind of clap. So it, I don't think it was all that well received. And then there were the new Toy Story watch faces with Woody, Jesse, and Buzz. So the third one was really three different watch faces. So technically you could say there was five new watch faces. They talked about uh, some new activity items and achievements, saying you will get daily inspirations with personalized progress updated from the moment you put on your Apple Watch at the start of the day. If that sounds like you're going to get it bombarded with more time to breathe, time to stand, Time to get into the Wounded Peacock pose notifications. Yep, you got it. It will even nag you at the end of the day saying you need to do more. And then there are the monthly challenges, which are all rewarded with new full screen effects every time you close a ring or hit a specific goal. For workouts, they added a new high-intensity training workout. Not one I'll ever be testing. There is enhanced swim tracking with an updated a uh, pool swim that automatically tracks sets and rests and pace for each set and distance for each time stroke and things like that. And it is now easier to do multiple workouts in a single session, swiping to other workouts. Um, then you can, say, get a comprehensive summary of the whole thing. So going from a swim to a bike to a run can all be in one session now. So if you're a triathlete, this is very nice for you. When you start a workout, Apple Watch will now turn on Do Not Disturb. So remember at the end of your workout to actually turn off your workout, because if you don't, you'll still be in Do Not Disturb. Finally, there is an option for new two-way communication with gym equipment. If the equipment is NFC enabled, you can pair your Apple Watch with the machine to get metrics like speed and calories burned, and you give back heart rate from your watch. Equipment makers on board for this uh, will be... Techno Gym, Matrix, Life Fitness, Cybex, Star Trek, Stairmaster, and Schwinn when they roll this out later this year. Music app is updated to easily scroll through album covers. There's also automatic sync with your playlists and Apple curated lists for you and your favorite music. So they're making it easier to get music onto your Apple Watch. Apple Watch uh, demo was done by Vera. And that was kind of just a, a preview of the, the Apple Watch 4.0. And the developer preview of Watch 4.0 is actually available today. So June 5th, 
So by the time you hear this, it is available and you can download it if you're a developer. Tim came back on stage for Section 3A, which is the Mac OS update, and he quickly handed it off to Craig Federici. He mentioned uh, last year's Mac OS update was called Sierra, and that the Apple folks looked all over California for the next great innovative name that they could come up with, and they came up with Hi Sierra. I kid you not. Craig assured us the name was fully baked in. Insert rim shot here. Normally, I would not talk about this, but I think some of the things will end up in iOS eventually. Um, so here is a few of the things Craig mentioned, I think, that are worth going over. First, Safari is now the fastest web browser on a PC, but more importantly, they are adding in autoplay blocking in Safari. You know, when you go to like CNN.com, for example, and it starts playing a video ad, or you go to iMore.com and who knows what to start playing. Uh, well, this will block those self-playing video ads. Also, ever go to a site to buy something and then for the next month, almost every site you visit has an ad for it? Yeah, they are tracking you, obviously. Well, no more. Safari will intro intelligent tracking prevention. Something from iOS is moving to macOS, and that is Apple File System for macOS. For video, they are now supporting H.265 codec, which is more efficient than H.264 codec. We'll talk about that more later, because uh, that does actually make its way over to the iOS. And Hi Sierra now has native VR support. Uh, Beta 1 for Mac OS Hi Sierra is available today to devs and later in June for public beta testers. Next up was John Turnus, the VP of Hardware Engineering and sporting a not tucked in shirt. He was the first of the non tuckers. And this would be the item 3B, and it's the Mac product line. And John talked about iMac line upgrades first. And do people still buy desktops, really? Okay. Well, he then had John Knoll and Lauren from ILM, Industrial Lights Magic, for a VR demo, and they weren't tucked. And then John Turnus came back and went over the notebook updates. And pretty much it was just updates to processors. Now they're going to KB Lake processors from Intel for all the MacBooks, which really, that was the key upgrade. Uh, no other real upgrades. Uh, no improvements to the processor. There was a little bit of a bump to the graphic processor for the MacBook Pros, and then for the non-MacBook Pros, they updated the SSD speed. But that's really it. New iMacs and MacBook Pros are available today, and then they introed um, the Mac Pro, which will ship at the end of the year. And it's the most powerful Mac ever, up to 18 cores, but the 8-core version where it starts, that's the low end of the Mac iMac Pro, uh, that will start at $4,999 for the 8-core version. Ouch. Can't imagine what the 18-core version is going to cost. All right, enough with the Max. But before we get into the iOS 11, I first want to go ahead and thank our sponsor today, and that's Texture. As I said before, Texture is essentially the Netflix of magazines. You get access to over 200 of the top magazines. We're talking Time, Forbes, Nat Geo, Fast Company, GQ, Vogue, Popular Mechanics, Popular Science, Wired, Macworld, and Smithsonian, to name just a few. And you only need one app and service to get all these great magazines, and that is Texture. And Texture really helps me keep track of the podcasting marketplace and the smartphone industry. That is the beauty of Texture. You get access to over 200 top magazines covering every niche with your subscription. Texture has gone beyond delivering just the magazine itself. They've made it easy to find and enjoy the articles you want to read. With daily recommendations, exclusive interactive features, videos, and more, Texture is normally $9.99 a month, and you can get over 200 magazines. But if you sign up right now at Texture, T-E-X-T-U-R-E, Texture.com slash T-I-I-I, you will get a 14-day trial. That's Texture.com slash T-I-I. The magazine looks great on your iPhone and iPad. All of them do, and that means you have access to all those magazines anytime, anywhere. And here is what I really like. You can search for a topic across all the magazines. Search for podcast and sort by the newest, and I can keep up to date with my day job. 
Why on earth would you subscribe to a couple of magazines when you could have all of the best ones on your smartphone or iPad all the time for way less? Sign up for Texture right now and gain insider access to all the content from the world's best publications and no trees were killed bringing you these great publications. It's all just bits, man. Once again, go to texture.com slash TII to get your free 14-day trial. Get real news from real news sources. All right, time for item four, which is iOS 11. Tim came back on stage for a minute to just take a few jabs at Android, pointing out that 86% of iOS devices are running iOS 10 versus just 7% running Android 7. Both were released about the same time, actually Android 7, just a little bit before iOS 10. Craig came back, and he went over iOS 11 and the new features. Last year for iOS 10, they ended the new big features with a huge emphasis on Messages app. For iOS 11, they started with the Messages app. First up, it has a redesigned app drawer. Really, is that not just saying they did a UI fix? And then Messages for iCloud, uh, which now they sync over all devices. This includes all your old conversations when moving to a new device. Next up was Apple Pay. Craig said by the end of the year, it would be available at 50% of retailers in the U.S. The biggest new feature is person-to-person payments, and they are finally available. This has been rumored for some time, as in starting well before WWDC 2016 time. Person-to-person payments are integrated with messages. And if you receive money, it goes to your Apple Pay cash card, uh, which you can then send out to others, or you can transfer to your bank. I would guess this is probably one of the top new features that people have been asking for for iOS. So a lot of people are going to be happy with person-to-person payments, very especially small businesses. Craig then talked about Siri, which is used monthly on 375 million devices. Siri is available in 21 languages across 36 countries. Craig then said, we are making a big upgrade to, wait for it, wait for it, yes, to the voice of Siri. Huh? How about how she or he responds accuracy-wise to what I ask her? That would be a great idea for a big update, but I digress. One new feature is translation beta. Ask her to say something in another language. Initially, it will support translation from English to Chinese, French, German, Italian, and Spanish, with more languages combinations in the months to come. So yes, one more step closer to that universal translator of Star Trek lore. Siri Kit for iOS 11 has more features for third-party apps. There's ride scheduling, bills, payments, banking, messaging, photo search, VoIP calling, workouts, car controls, lists, and more. Craig said the Siri on-device learning in, in, is enhanced with iOS 11, and Siri will be learning more about you as a user and what you like to do and predicting what apps and info you will need next. And of course, and an encryption when Siri shares that information between your devices. The camera app um, is getting a little improvement on the video going to H.265 or HEVC, which stands for High Efficiency Video Codec, which gives up to 2x better compression. New photo compression tech replacing JPEG with HEIF, High Efficiency Image Format, which Apple claims to get also 2x better compression. That means your video files will be half the size and your pictures will be half the size. More room on your device. Don't worry, you can still share those photos with others. Uh, For portrait photos, they've added improved image quality, improved low light performance, optical image stabilization, true tone flash, and HDR images. Again, that's for the portrait photos. And now Apple is exposing the depth info from the dual cameras to developers with a new depth API. So third-party developers can have some real fun with the uh, depth effect. The photo app, uh, memories can find pets and sporting events and performances and outdoor activities and weddings and baby and more. So there's more intelligence there on the photo app. 
updates to live photos, um, you are now better able to trim live photos and you can change uh, which one is the actual photo. You can mute a live photo. You can set it up to loop over and over and over or bounce where that bouncing means it goes forward to a certain point and then bounces back in reverse. And then there's also a long exposure feature. So some nice new features there around live photos. Control Center updated, and I really like this. It's better organized and 3D touch features. No more swiping up to close apps though. Uh, you tap and hold apps in the Control Center and then an X appears in the upper left center uh, corner and then you tap on the X to close out apps. If you 3D touch on one of the options in Control Center, you get more features to choose from. And one of the really nice new features is um, you ever tap on your phone and you see a notification on your, your screen and as you pick up the phone, you accidentally unlock it. You, you put your thumb across the, the home button. That's how I normally pick mine up. And before you actually even get to read the notification, it's gone. Um, well, yeah, that happens to me all the time. Now, once unlocked with iOS 11, you can swipe back down from the top of the screen and you'll see the notification screens that you had for the lock screen and you can quickly read or interact with those notifications and then you, if you, at that point if you scroll up you can also see earlier notifications from earlier in the day i really like this new feature i don't know how many times i've had a notification on my lock screen and i picked up the phone and just lost it per safari uh, there is new machine learning safari knows what you visit and then learns new words for you to use when using other apps so it's sharing that information with other apps, again, encrypted and just on device. And then Apple went over a dozen other new Safari features. Oh, wait, no, no, they did not. That was all they mentioned about Safari. Nothing about new privacy features, nothing else. They did go over the Maps app, which now has detailed floor plans of malls and airports. Odd, I did not know anyone went to malls anymore. Guess it must be a regional thing. For malls, they will support the following cities. Boston, Chicago, Hong Kong, London, Los Angeles, New York, Philly, San Fran, San Jose, Tokyo, and Washington, D.C. For airports, they will support 30 airports to start with around the world, most in the U.S., with more to come. Interestingly, not the Atlanta airport. There are also improvements to the Maps app for navigation. And the upper left is now the speed limit. And most important, lane guidance in Maps. How many times did you come to one of those clover leaves in a city you've never been to and you're driving, you have no idea which way to go, and you're not sure which lane to be in and you wind up going the wrong, one of the wrong exits, although it looked like you were in the right place. This update will help keep that from happening. So it'll tell you which of the lanes to be in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Apple introduced Do Not Disturb While Driving. This blocks notifications when you're driving. It's a nice safety feature. You can say if you're not driving, say you're in the back seat, you can let it know that you're not driving. But if you are, it sends back a message to anyone that sends you a message saying you are in Do Not Disturb While Driving mode. And you can select special people to break through, just like with regular DND. With HomeKit, they added a new category, speakers. You can configure your speakers inside of HomeKit and access them with the new AirPlay 2 protocol. 14 manufacturers have already announced support for AirPlay 2. That includes Bose and Polk and Macintosh and Marantz and Blue Sound and Definitive Technology and many others. The AirPlay 2 API is now available for devs. Apple Music, you can now see what your friends have been listening to. Word of mouth recommendations from your friends without using their mouth. And you can see what they have been listening to right in the Music app. There is a new Music Kit for Apple Music API. This allows full access to the Apple Music service, cloud library access, features music and charts, Search, playlists, stations, and catalog, all available via the new API. Phil Schiller then came out to talk about the update to the Apple Store. There are over 500 million visitors weekly to the App Store. 
there has been 180 billion downloads to date. That's initial downloads and does not count multi-downloads to other devices or updates. $70 billion, as we mentioned previously, has been paid to devs to date. That means $100 billion in app sales to date. And 30% of that, or $30 billion or over $30 billion, have happened in the last year alone. Why are so many app downloaders out there? Two key reasons, according to Phil. One, the iTunes App Store is a trusted and safe place. And two, it's a great opportunity for all developers, and that attracts in the best of the developers. Some of the things Apple has worked on over the past year include faster app review times, down to one day or less for many apps, and a few hours in some cases. Test flight supports multiple builds, reviews API, responses to reviews, subscription reporting, expanded free trials, and much more coming this year, like test flight to more testers, auto renewal for Apple Pay, reset ratings, new iOS design resources, subscription apps transfer, phase releases, and more. Bill then talked about a completely redesigned App Store. Today is the first new tab, which shows some of the new apps appearing and information about app devs. There is a Games tab, and it's just for games. Then there's an Apps tab, which is everything other than games. And then Apple can now feature in-app purchases. And the product pages themselves have been improved with new features and a better look. Ann T came out, and she talked about the App Store and did a demo. The highlights of the demo? Well, Ann said GIF with a hard G, then said it with a J as an afterthought. Just saying. Oh, and she also said Monument Valley 2 is finally available. Phil came back out for like 10 seconds and passed it back to Craig. I don't understand why that even happened. Craig talked about some of the core technologies. First up was ML, which stands for Machine Learning. And the new APIs, starting with Vision API, which supports face detection, face tracking, landmarks, text detection, rectangle detection, barcode detection, object tracking, and image registration. These are all APIs that Apple has used previously as kind of private APIs. Now they're making those public. And then there is a natural language API, which supports language detection, tokenization, part of speech, names, entity recognition, and more. These are all built on core ML. Again, that's machine learning, which provides deep neural networks, recurrent neural networks, convolution neural networks, supports vector machines, tree ensembles, and linear models. This all means, yes, Skynet is one update closer to being. Well, that, and it means on-device processing, as in great data privacy. And this is for iOS, Mac OS, Watch OS, and TV OS. And that means for images recognized per minute on the iPhone 7, it's over six times faster than Google Pixel and Sammy S8. That's what kind of your real-world application of all this. Much faster processing on iOS devices. Then Craig talked about AR, augmented reality, and AR kit, which provides fast and stable motion tracking, plane estimations, ambient lighting estimations, scale estimations, support for Unity, Unreal, and Scene Kit, and Xcode app templates. What it all means is very simply this better looking Pokemon Go. Apple devices make up the largest AR platform in the world. And then next up was a demo from Alistair Cole from Wignut AR. And they had this really cool virtual reality world they created on the desktop. And then they showed one of those screenshots with many of the other iOS new features, which we will get into more detail in upcoming episodes. But they include, and again, this is just a partial list, automatic setup where you place your old device near your new device, and it transfers over all your settings and info. Type to Siri accessibility, one-handed zoom in maps, password autofill for apps, enterprise network security, NFC reader mode, which was totally glossed over, which will be really interesting to see what that entails and what's available. Screen recording, which is a really nice 
finally built-in feature, which I will be using to record how new features work and where to find them. Look for a bunch of new videos in the TI app coming soon. Storage optimization, one-handed keyboard, advanced Wi-Fi analytics, redesigned podcast app, which you know I'll be going over in future episodes, screenshot and markup, PDF accessibility, Russian and English bilingual dictionary, which I hear is a big hit in DC, expanded Braille editing, voiceover description for images, and much, much more. Although Craig did not highlight all the um, items, he did go over a few with regards to users in China, which include QR support right in the camera, right from the lock screen, SMS fraud extensions, traffic camera alerts in China, Shanghainese dictionary, English on 10 key pinyin keyboard, and phone numbers as Apple ID. Again, there are more new features that will be discovered as we play with iOS 11, and I go over it in future episodes and as you go over it. So please, if you are playing with iOS 11 as well, give me a call, 206-666-6364. That's 206 Moondog, or send an email to todayinios at gmail.com and let me know what are some of your favorite new features. And here's some initial feedback uh, with regards to iOS 11 already. Hi, Rob. The ones I'm excited about are iCloud Family Storage Plans, finally, Streamline Family Setup, and possibly iCloud Family Apple Music Integration, whatever that means. Regards, Mark. And then, hi, Rob. iOS 11, dark mode. Well, smart invert, really. Finally, here. Go to Settings, General Accessibility, Display Accommodations, and then you can select Smart Invert. Regards, Stephen W. Then from the Google Plus community, and this is from Robert S., quote, just loaded iOS 11 beta on my iPad 12.9-inch iPad Pro. The productivity improvements are awesome, especially multitasking and the increased integration with Apple Pencil. I've only tried a few things, but I love the ability to take screenshots and then instantly mark it up with comments by clicking on the thumbnail in the lower left corner of the screen. The new files app and drag and drop will truly make an iPad a lot more of a desktop replacement. The built-in screen recorder that can be added to the control panel instantly records a video of whatever you're doing on your iPad and then sends it to your camera roll as a movie. This will be great for training, demos, and just communicating multi-step procedures visually. FYI warning, the beta is buggy. My subjective opinion is that this beta is much less stable than the first beta of iOS 10 last year. No surprise given that some of the new features really change the guts plumbing of things inside of iOS. So be careful, be very, very careful loading the beta on anything you must rely on. Use a spare iPad or iPhone at your own risk, unquote. Yes, 100% agree with that last comment there, especially beta one. It's for devs only. The reason why it's only for devs, and it's only meant for the devices that are not your main device. Right now, I have it on my iPad Pro only, and so far, my comments and experiences are similar to Robert's. iPad Pro really benefits a lot from iOS 11. Eventually, I'll put this on my iPhone, but probably not until beta 4 or beta 5. For the first three betas, as a min, put it only on non-essential devices. Remember that, iOS 11, first three betas, do not put it on an essential need for work device. As just talked about, the iPad really benefited from iOS 11, and that leads us to item five, iPad Pro updates. Yep, I was wrong when I said I doubted the rumors about there being a new 10.5 inch iPad Pro being announced at WWDC, but then they were wrong when they said it was gonna be February and March and April. I don't mind being wrong here. Love new products to talk about. Jaws came out on stage and he talked about iPad Pro updates. First one was, as I said, the long rumored iPad Pro 10.5 inch. It still weighs just one pound and knocks the 9.7 inch iPad Pro out of the lineup. Now there are four iPads. The iPad mini 4 at 7.9 inches, the iPad at 9.7 inches, the iPad Pro at 10.5 inches, and the iPad Pro at 12.9 inches. That is your current lineup as of today and not likely to change this year at all. 
there, from this point forward, that is, there was a quote from that rumor on May 2nd, or here's a quote from that rumor. So let's go over what the rumor actually was back on May 2nd. Quote, according to a report by Dolkin Fant website, D-O-N-K-E-L-F-H-A-N-T, uh, Apple might unveil the iPad Pro 2 at WWDC, yes, along with three other iPad devices, no. Uh, the company may include the 12.9-inch iPad Pro 2, other iPads with 10.5-inch uh, screens and 10-inch screens, nope, not on the 10, but yes, on the 10.5, as well as the iPad mini 5. Nope. Uh, so, un unquote there. So, the, they thought there was going to be, what, four iPads, and we got two new ones. So, they were definitely, they were definitely not dead nuts on, as, again, there were only two new ones announced. But they did get the fact that there was an iPad Pro 2 at 12.9 inches and, and the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. Per the new iPad Pro at 10.5 inches, it allows for a full-size on-screen keyboard and a full-size smart keyboard. It's available in silver, space gray, gold, and rose gold. Both the 10.5 inch and the 12.9 inch will get true tone display, wide color gamut, ultra low reflectivity, 600 nits of brightness, so that's much brighter than previous screens, and then HDR video. ProMotion is the big new feature. It allows for a refresh rate of up to 120 hertz. Previously, it was 60 hertz. So that means it works better with the Apple Pencil because it's refreshing twice as often. So now the latency is just 20 milliseconds, which is industry best. It also means scrolling is smoother, crisper, better feel, or as they call it, buttery smooth. The refresh rate is dynamic, and it changes based on what is on the screen. This helps with the quality and power savings. So when you don't need it, it lowers the refresh rate. When you do need it, it ups it up. Looking at a still image, uh, it reduces that refresh rate down to like 48 uh, hertz. And going with uh, motion video, depending on where you're going to be, you're going to either it's going to show at 60 or 120 hertz uh, refresh. Both get the new A10X 6-core CPU. So both the 10.5 and the 12.9 are using the same processor now, the A10X 6-core CPU with the 12-core GPU. That means 30% faster CPU versus the A9X and 40% faster graphics performance. Next was a demo by Ash Husson, Husson, H-E-W-S-N-O-N, and he was from Serif, and he demoed Infinity Photo, which is a really cool app, and it's now available in the App Store, so if you're looking for a good graphics app, um, something similar to Photoshop, uh, Infinity Photo was, was the one that they demoed on stage. Per the specs, iPad Pro still gets 10 hours of battery life. The camera now, uh, the cameras on the iPad Pro are the same as what's on the iPhone 7 front and back. So they have the same front and the same back as the iPhone 7. The iPad Pro supports USB 3. Uh, it's double the memories to start at 64, not enough gigabytes. Then it goes to 256 is enough gigabytes. And then 512 should be good for life of the unit gigabyte storage. Pricing starts at 649 for the 10.5 inch and 799 for the 12.9 inch. And then it goes all the way up to $1,229 for the 12.9 inch Wi-Fi and cellular 512 gig version. Throw on a smart keyboard and Apple Pencil and you're over $1,500 with taxes, baby. You can order today, and the new iPad Pros will be shipping next week. We talked briefly about the new features in iOS 11 for the iPad Pro here, um, and there are a little bit more detail. So in the past, we gave a little bit of the features, but he here's, I'd say, better details on what you're going to get. First, Apple claims iOS 11 is the biggest iOS release for the iPad, and, and I, would, I would agree with that. Uh, it's nice to see a lot of iPad specific features. The first thing you will like is the dock. It lets you add lots of apps. This is nice for your most used apps. Multitasking is even easier because you can pull up an app from the dock into multitask, which again is nice since that dock allows more apps. So the notes app, Safari, messages, email, pages, Evernote, 
These are ones that quickly went into my dock. Well, some are already there. And you can now bring up the dock when in any apps right from the bottom of the screen. You can drag and drop now on the iPad. So you can drag images and text from one app into another. To quote Craig from the thing, it's a drag fest, unquote. There is the ability to flick on keys to get to numbers and special characters uh, to appear. I have not seen this in action yet, but then it's a beta one and I haven't played with a lot of apps yet. There is a new app, a really, really important new app called Files, which makes the iPad finally a laptop replacement. It now supports nested folders, spring-loaded folding, uh, list view, favorites, search, tags, and re recent views for different apps or, or um, files. This is nice. You can now have files that get sent to you or where you need to send them out to people. It's a folder structure, finally, for the iPad. And it supports iCloud storage of files and third-party storage or on-device storage. And the third-party storage includes Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, Google Drive, which is big for me. Did I mention I have Google Fiber now? And I can get a ton of storage. I do actually get a ton of storage with Google Drive. So I've got a whole terabyte worth of storage from Google Drive. For me, I could really see the iPad Pro being used for 99% of my business use versus my MacBook Pro. So it, it's really, with these new features, it's really hard for me not to use my iPad Pro. Uh, so I, I'm really thinking about switching over for most of my uses. We'll see. Uh, one of the other great features in iOS 11 is the scanning of documents right into the Notes app. This is a little bit hidden, but in the Notes app, at the top right of the keyboard, when in the Notes app, tap on the plus symbol and then select Scan Document. Then once you scan the document, you mark the corners and it fixes the document to be aligned correctly. Then once in the Notes app, you can use the Apple Pencil to mark up that document. And you can even add text boxes uh, to fill in if it's a form. This is something my oldest son will be able to use for school next year uh, where he needs to fill in homework docs. Uh, he can now quickly scan and then add text to the documents that he types or handwritten notes. Um, even allows coloring in parts. This is going to be a huge game changer for him uh, for next year because we were already looking at different applications because he was going to get some help, um, assistive tech for next year. So if you have a child that needs assistive tech, and part of that is scanning a document and filling it in. This is now built in to iOS 11. And I've tried it out already, and it worked great. Um, markup with Apple Pencil. If you take a screenshot, you can quickly mark it up. And in notes, uh, you can even search handwritten notes. Markup with the Apple Pencil and email as well. Uh, there was a demo by Toby Peterson of iOS 11 and the iPad. And then Tim came back on and he ran through a video of iPad and iOS 11. Again, it's a big, big update for the iPad Pro. Um, beta of iOS 11 is available today. For devs, you're hearing this, it's available. And it will go to the public beta testers at the end of June. Per the devices it supports, well, iOS 10 supported 19 iOS devices. Of those 19, 16 will still support iOS 11. The three that will not support iOS 11 are iPhone 5, iPhone 5C, and the iPad 4th Gen. Those were the 32-bit devices. I don't think anyone is surprised at all about this news. With the addition of the two new iPads, iOS 11 will be supporting 18 devices during the beta period, and when it launches in the fall, if as expected there are three new iPhones, it will be supporting 21 devices on September. That's two more than iOS 10 supported last September. Apple does a great job supporting older devices. If anyone tells you anything different, they're just wrong. I mean, Apple has done a great job over the years keeping their devices live for a long time with the latest updates. And finally, we're at item six or seven, depending on how you're counting. And this is kind of the long missed one more thing, and it's HomePod. 
which was really the one piece of hardware almost all agreed would be announced at WWDC, and it was. So I don't know if this really can be considered one more thing because it was the one thing we all agreed was going to be there. Apple said they want to reinvent home music, and the device needs to first rock the house and have great sound. Second, that device needs to be spatially aware. And third, it needs to be fun to use. HomePod, per the name, well, when they announced it, it received muted applause at best, to be kind. Honestly, it's not a great or even good name. I don't know what they were thinking, but it's the name and they're not going to change it. Apple started out saying it's not an Echo, which has bad audio, or a Sonus, which is not smart. It's kind of a mix of an, uh, the Alexa intelligence and the Echo, uh, from the Echo, and then the Sonus, or other high-end speakers for sound quality. The HomePod is just about seven inches tall. It has seven beam-forming tweeters. It has precision acoustic horns and directional control. Apple designed a four-inch woofer in there. It's with automatic bass equalization and dynamic modeling. And it's all controlled by an A8 chip that allows for real-time acoustic modeling, audio beam forming, and multi-channel echo cancellation. This is not a low-end speaker, as will become clear when we go over the price. The HomePod automatically detects the space it's in. You put it in space, it detects the room it's in, it figures out the acoustics, and it figures out how to best transmit or play sound in that room. Some of the things it can also do or that you can ask it to do is play a podcast, play Apple Music, of course, news, do unit conversion, messages, reminders, alarms, and timers. You can set all that. Translation, you can ask for some translation. You can ask for stock information, general knowledge inquiries, weather info, traffic reports, sports scores, and updates, and control HomeKit. Pricing for HomePod is $349. It will be available in December in the U.S., U.K., and Australia only, and then in next year, 2018, will roll out to other countries. Some were expecting this to be an Echo and Google Home competitor. Matter of fact, going into the event, everyone was saying it was going to be an Echo and Google Home competitor. Let's look at pricing to see what kind of a competitor it is. The high-end Echo device currently that you can walk, you can have in your house today, the high-end Echo device from Amazon is $180. The Echo Dot is $50 and sometimes on sale for $40. And you can connect it to a, in the, the Echo Dot, you can connect it to a decent Bluetooth speaker for another $200 or less. I mean, for example, the Bose Sound Link Mini Bluetooth, which is pretty good sounding speaker, that, that will run you $179. And Amazon just announced actually the Echo Show, which will be $230 and available on June 28th. And that has a video screen with it. Google Home will run you $109. So again, at $350, it's not a direct competitor to the Echo devices or the Google Home. And there are things with regard to the acoustical awareness and other systems uh, that they're not, you're not, those other guys aren't going to be able to touch. But if you're looking for a smart speaker that can play podcasts, give you sports scores or weather, and tell you how many pints in a gallon, then there are definitely other options that make more sense and sense with a C and a sense with an S. So yeah, it's not an apple to apple comparison here. This is a this is for a high-end audio device that is a smart speaker with the A8 processor. Now, what does that mean versus say the Echo Dot that's going to be doing processing? Well, Echo Dot does processing back on the Google servers. This is going to be doing the processing on on board, which means it's more privacy. And as Apple said in their announcements, they don't start listening and doing anything with what you're saying until you say, hey, Siri. So until you say, hey, Siri, they're not listening to what you're saying. Whereas the Echo kind of is following everything that's you're being said in your house all the time. So that's, I think, the big difference I think Apple's going to sell on is Better audio quality, better privacy. Tim then came back on stage for a wrap-up, which was a quick three-minute wrap-up of all that went they went over today. I don't want to leave this as a downer um, with the HomePod. Uh, it is just for a specific audience, for those looking for great-sounding music with a smart, controlled speaker. 
iOS 11 sounds like a very solid update, and there are many new features we'll be talking about um, in future episodes, especially as they relate to iPhones. I will go over the settings app next time uh, to go over what some of those new features are in greater detail. We'll spend a little bit more time going over stuff about iPads than iPhones. And then hopefully we'll be getting um, many people's feedback. So if you're testing this out, please let us know your thoughts. And speaking of which, here is some of the feedback from those in the Google Plus community from Karthik M. Quote, what a jam-packed event. Best WWDC in a long time. HomePod, AR kit, iOS 11 for iPad, our standouts. A smart storage case for the iPad was mentioned, but not demoed. So much to cover. Supported uh, devices for new OS was not listed, unquote. Uh, from David Willoughby, quote, I was hoping for a Siri makeover. I am very underwhelmed. I use Google Maps due to Apple Maps. Siri keeps uh, sending me out of state when I simply say things like, take me to this business. The voice in Google Maps gets it right every time, unquote. Uh, from Fasil Kalani, with regards to HomePod and my comments about the price, quote, but they are promising a higher quality speaker sound with HomePod. Specifically, they have shown a Sonos Plus Echo. Sonos is our amazing high quality and speaker uh, company. If they can match their level with this speaker, then I'm buying. But they have used this as a marketing sketch. But if they but if they have used this as a marketing sketch, then Apple will be mocked, unquote. And from Francisco Tapia, quote, I too don't like the price point, but if I can hook it up to my Apple TV where I don't have surround of uh, or surround bars, I might just pick it up, unquote. So let me know your thoughts of WD WDC this year, 2017, and what was announced. Give us a call, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOONDOG. Or shoot an email to todayinios at gmail.com. Again, let me know what you liked or did not like with the announcement. If you're testing out the software, tell me some of the new features you like or do not like. Don't report bug crashes. Uh, Beta 1 is going to have a lot of bug crashes, so don't even bother reporting them. I'm not going to talk about that. I want to know features, things that are positive. So let's stay on the positive with regards to it or negative as far as what was not added. Are you smart? I'm smart enough to know not to answer that question. Are you smart? Well, when I was at school, I had to cheat on my metaphysics exam by looking into the soul of the boy next to me. Are you smart? I couldn't even begin to think about knowing how to answer that question. Are you smart? We intelligent agents don't really undergo IQ tests. But I scored off the charts in the Zoltax Sayaneg carry. Are you smart? Well, a wise man once said, I am so smart. S-M-R-T. Thanks again to Texture for sponsoring this episode. Folks, go right now to texture.com slash TII to get your free 14-day trial with access to over 200 of the best and most popular magazines. Before we go today, I want to remind you to send in your feedback to the show. 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOON-DOG. Record your feedback and email to the show at todayinios at gmail.com. Feedback can be a question or comment for something someone said on this episode, or it can be a question or rant you have about something else, an app or product review, good or bad, as long as it's iOS related, it is welcomed. Always looking for new artwork to feature on the episode that you've created on an iOS device. Just put some TII branding on it. And send in. And of course, we're always looking for more music created on an iOS device to play on the show. This is your show, and your feedback is greatly desired. Don't forget to check out our moderated Google Plus community by going to todayinios.com slash community. And a quick reminder, if you are an app dev or an iBook author, feel free to email me if you want to get your app or iBook featured in the promo giveaway segment for free. We just need five promo codes or more to give away. Simply email me at todayinios at gmail.com, and please include a 60-second or less audio review of your app or iBook, indicating you are the dev and the author. Also, when you send in the promo codes, please make sure to let me know when they expire. One more time, I mentioned this in the last episode, I'll mention it again. If you could please go to podcastlistener.com slash TII, there's a really quick survey to take. Again, that's podcastlistener.com slash TII. Thanks for your help on that. 
And finally, check out the recently updated TI app. It's free to you. Just search for TI in the iTunes App Store. Best way to consume the show and to get push notifications each time a new episode is released. And of course, it's voiceover friendly. Until the next time, I'm your host, Rob, from Today in iOS, reminding you to bone different. This show is hosted on Libsyn.com and part of the Wizard Media Network. If you are looking for hosting, go to Libsyn.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, for hosting for your podcast and for creation of your own smartphone app. The Today in iOS podcast can also be found on the free Stitcher radio app. Just search for T-I-I.